got a motor we're going to be rebuilding here. Um, this motor is going to be for Emmanuel's car. Um, this is a closed deck uh, block with pin mains and a lot of good stuff, half inch studs. Been pushing this motor pretty good. So uh, we bought this motor, you know, for a really good deal. It had a spun bearing. And so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and I'm going to check this entire block over for rebuilding it to see if it's suitable to be rebuilt. So first thing I I've been doing is I'm going to clean all these saddles. So these are the saddles here on the block. We're going to go ahead and use some uh, emery cloth or scotch bright, whatever you want to call it. We try to clean these out because this is what it looks like before from the old bearings that was in here. We want to just lightly clean this out. We're not trying to get crazy here and, and take clearance out of this, but I like to get them cleaned up like this where they look good. All these surfaces need to be clean because when we go to set this main line up, anything that's on these deck surfaces is going to affect the, the measurement. So right now, just going to be going over. We're just going to clean all these up just by hand, just real light, nice and easy. And you can see here, this stuff comes off pretty easy. Uh, this scotch bright doesn't hurt the aluminum at all. Um, this barely takes anything off. The saddles, you can see they clean up really good. Just a couple little swipes. Already looks really good there. So yeah, we're going to go over all these journals. We're going to get these cleaned up so that we can finally drop in the uh, bearings we're going to be using. And then we're going to be measuring the, the main bearing clearances, which on a Subaru, this is, uh, this is something that not a lot of people talk about. It's kind of a trade secret with a lot of big builders, but this is the key to making the engine actually work correctly and not have to be rebuilt again and again and again and not know why. So a lot of people will just slam bearings in it, standard bearings in it and call it a day and then they're rebuilding it again in 500,000 or 3,000 miles and they don't know why. And they, they try to blame it on Subaru because the motors are garbage, but if you do this right, you're not gonna have that problem. I've, I've never had that problem personally. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna take you guys through this and kind of show you a few little things here that a lot of people aren't gonna show you because honestly, I mean, in this industry, there's a lot of competition and a lot of people like me spent years figuring this out and they're not gonna show you for a reason because they had to pay to figure this out at one point. And um, so I can totally understand, you know, where a lot of people are coming from. Um, I'm not going to show you my specs because that's chef's recipe, but I will show you how I get my specs and how to measure this stuff and uh, what to look out for and just, you know, a couple things like that. So we're going to get these cleaned up. It's kind of a tedious process, but just like a good paint job on a car, the prep work is makes all the difference. The more time you take in prepping the block and cleaning, the better the end result's gonna be. I mean, you can see this stuff leaves a lot of residue everywhere all over the block. This is just, you know, preliminary cleaning. This thing's gonna get cleaned multiple times before final assembly. We're gonna get everything out. We're gonna pull galley plugs. We're gonna flush all the galleys. We're gonna do all that. So don't freak out when you see a bunch of fuzz in here and. And all these all this dirt and whatnot because this stuff isn't going to stay here this is just the the first step in cleaning this block up so that we can get ready to get you know seriously clean with it but yeah cleaning is is basically 90 percent of this job honestly i mean just keeping things clean getting things fitting right you know checking for burrs on edges on everything i mean all these little edges you want to feel for burrs nicks any nicks in this surface here is crucial. This doesn't have any nicks because when the cases are bolted together, any any burrs or imperfections in this surface on both sides is going to create uneven clamping and warpage and it's not going to seal properly. It's going to affect your main line because these blocks are sandwiched together with bolts and if there's any problems here, you're going to have issues. So we have to be very meticulous when we go over this, especially being a used block that's already been built by somebody else before. We have no idea um, what they did to assemble it, what they what the clearances were. Um, we just don't know. So we have to assume that everything is bad in order to address all the issues. So always go into it thinking it's bad until it proves that it's not bad. That's my motto when I build an engine. So just because a part looks good doesn't mean it's good. So we got everything pretty much wiped down now. We're just going to give it a quick little wipe down here just to get it where it's clean enough where we can deal with it 
We're going to flip it over, get some of the other junk out of there. Clean this up a little bit here. I'm going to wipe these saddles down real good. And again, these surfaces, we're trying to get these really clean. You can see here, this is a closed deck. You can see here's a good picture of this one. This is a special one because this one has a fire lock system. So um, this is actually a case that's made by IAG. And you can see these machine grooves here in the cylinder. These are for fire lock rings that they, they do, which are really cool. Um, this is so that we don't blow a head gasket at really high power levels. Um, it's actually pretty neat. So this block should be able to handle a ton of power and a lot of boost once we get everything right. I mean, right now we got to figure out if we can even use this block, honestly, without uh, machine work and all this stuff. So that's what we're going to be doing today is just measuring and seeing what the condition is of the case and if it's shifted at all. Because these Subaru blocks, when you put a lot of power to them, uh, what happens is, is these cases will shift. And so you'll see we have these pins here. So this is a pin main case. What this does, these shuffle pins lock into the other side. There's receivers here on this case side. You can see these holes here. So what that does is if you look at these center mains in the block on a Subaru, there's no support in the middle. And you can see here, there's not a lot of support here, but in the back you have a ton. So you don't need pins in the back generally or the front because there's a lot of support in the front and the back. But these two here especially are very vulnerable to moving around because there's nothing holding them. This one, not so much, but still there's a lot of material missing on this side, so it kind of floats there. But what these pins do is these are gonna interlock the block together so that there's no way this block can shift under high torque loads and high boost. So generally our stage five motors that I do all have these pins in them. Um, I always recommend them. Anybody that wants more than 600 wheel horsepower, I always say, you know, pin mains are the way to go. It's good insurance because when this main line starts to shift under high load, you're going you're gonna to lose oil pressure and you're going to lose your main clearances and just bad things happen. It's all downhill from there. So uh, this, this motor should handle a ton of power, but uh, we got to figure out if uh, all the main clearances are even doable yet. This is the old crankshaft that was in it. Um, this is a manly billet crank. Um, this crank, you can see here, it spun a bearing on this journal here. That's what all that scoring is. So the bearing actually welded itself to this journal. Um, this is number two, and number two is a very common bearing to lose. Um, this is a cross-drilled oiled crank. So that's why I'm going to be very, very meticulous going through this block because I would I want to know why this happened because it's not very common on this uh, with this crank. You know, you can see there even some of the bearings melted on. It's gold. So... We're not going to be reusing this crank. I do not turn cranks. I do not reuse them when this happens. That's my policy. Um, some people do. Some people will. I have never had good luck doing it, so I'm not going to reuse this crank. So we're going to set that there. We're going to come on this. Let's try to get this one cleaned up. I'm just going to wipe her down a little bit. Give her a nice little wipe down. Saddles down. So we've got, still got some silicone on this back side here. So you can't really see it, but if you look closely, you see there's a little skim of silicone. There's a little pattern. I don't know if the camera's going to pick that up, but. That kind of stuff has to be cleaned because when we bolt these cases together to measure everything, um, that's going to affect our readings. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I'm very meticulous when it comes to my, my clearances on my blocks. I've always been that way. Um, let's see what I can do, what I do with my scotch bright. I set this on it. I don't know it, where it went. Oh, here we go. Yeah, it sticks to the rag. So look at that. We are going to come over here and we're going to get this silicone off of here. You know, I, I spend a lot of time on prepping my blocks more than actual measuring a lot of the time because prep is everything, especially on a used case. A used case, it, there could be so many issues. You just really got to keep your eyes open. New cases are generally what I like to do on these motors. 
Um, but we got a killer deal on this case and we're hoping that this one is gonna work out. Um, so, you know, and it's, you know, for Emmanuel, you know, me and him, we kinda, we've had a, we've had a long relationship over the years. This is kind of a personal deal. So um, for customer stuff, I always recommend a new case just to minimize the risk on for a customer. But um, for our stuff, we, uh, you know, if we can save a buck and we can still get a good result, we're gonna try. So um, that's what we're doing here. So hopefully uh, everything works out with this case and it measures out good, so. All right, now that we got this all wiped down pretty good, it's nowhere near clean enough to, to assemble final, but it's good enough to take some measurements. So we're gonna get the bearings. So we're gonna get the bearings out here. Let's see. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with, uh, we'll start with these ones here. So I use ACL bearings in my builds. I've been using them for years and I've had very good luck with ACL. They've done me well. Um, but these are gonna be a thrust five bearing. So thrust five means that you have you have one, two, three, four, five journals on these Subaru blocks. The thrust five means the thrust bearing is built in at the back. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's what thrust number five means. All STIs and uh, the modern ones are thrust number five. And if you look at these bearings, they're all very similar except for this one. This one's special. So this one here, you can see it's it's definitely special. There's a bearing surface here, but this is the actual thrust bearing for the crankshaft of the engine built into the sides of it. There's a you know locking tab right there, which is critical. That has to go on the lock tab here. But you can see the block is also machined for that thrust bearing on both sides. So this bearing goes right here. Pushes down flush. The locking tab must be there. You always have to make sure you pay attention to that because if you don't, it's gonna be a very, very bad first start. So all these bearings have lock tabs on them as well. And drop these in here. Make sure they're flush and they're pushed down nice and good. We're just gonna line these up and make sure they're all in there. Just like that. And this, we're just dry fitting everything right now. We're not gonna be putting the crank in it yet or putting assembly lube or silicone on the block yet because this is the first step to figuring out if this block needs machine work or it's gonna work or not, because we're gonna measure the main line on this block and we're gonna dry fit everything to make sure. Um, some people uh, will do this without putting bearings in it and they'll just come in and measure the tunnels without bearings in them. You can do that. Um, however, there is a variance bearing to bearing. These bearings are never gonna be exactly the same box to box. There always is a small tolerance variance just in manufacturing. So what can happen is if you measure the tunnel that way, I mean, it, it works, you know, a lot of people do that. Personally, I like to be more, a little more exact. I like to use the bearings I'm gonna use, the crank I'm gonna use, and not just go off of known values. I like to use actual here right now, what this measures out at, and that's just how I am. I've always been that way, and it's worked out really well for me, um, and I haven't had any issues. But, you know, like I said, there's there's other ways to do this. This isn't the only way, so. Everybody's got their, their little formula that works for them, that's fine. So we're gonna load all these bearings up, just like that. So now basically we've got all the bearings in here the way they're gonna go. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna dry fit the case together and then we're gonna take some measurements. So um, we're gonna lube up all these pins. So all these pins are gonna get a little bit of oil on them so that the case slides together nice and easy and helps us measure. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get this case is ready and then we'll come back. Okay, so we've got the case halves uh, tapped together. Um, I usually use a rubber mallet with a wood end. So I'll come by and I'll just make sure everything's seated. So what we gotta do is we're gonna go around the block in a circle with this rubber mallet and we're gonna seat it evenly as possible because those pins are gonna make things more difficult than normal to put these together. But it's really important to get them completely seated. You want this gap to be gone. You see there's a little gap there? That's not what we want because that means the block's seated. There you go. You see how it popped down? 
We need that. We gotta look all around and make sure because if you don't work this block down right and you just slam the bolts in it and torque them down, it's gonna put things in a bind and then when you go and measure your clearances and take it apart to final assemble it, it could be different. And then you're gonna be like, well, wait a minute, I checked the clearances, why did the motor fail? Well, little things like that, little, little things like that will screw you every time I've seen it. So we have to be really careful with our assembly here and our, and our measuring. We gotta check everything, look it over really well and all that. So this block also is gonna have ARP case bolts. Um, so all our stage five motors that I build, um, ARP case bolts are a must to keep these cases together at really high boost levels uh, because the stock bolts will stretch on you. So we're just gonna drop these in. We're gonna drop the washers as well. Not supposed to do that. Another thing I wanna take a note here is uh, there's two types of washers. There's washers with rubber inside and there's washers with no rubber. The no rubber ones go on the outside of the back and the outside of the front. The ones with the rubber go inside the cooling jackets because if you don't put them right, uh, coolant will leak through the threads in the block because these are full of coolant in these cooling jackets. That's why there's seals on them. So in case you guys didn't know, that's why those are different. Um, on final assembly, when we've put this block together for the final, we're going to replace all these rubber ones. We always replace them every time. Now we're going to do is we're going to run these down just gently. Just, just till they stop. We're not putting any pressure on them yet. side put those bolts in as well so you can see here the two ones that don't have the rubber those are going to go on the front because there's no cooling jacket here so they don't need the rubber Now that we've got those snug, we're going to go over by hand and we're just going to, we're going to torque them all with the torque wrench. And this is a multi-step process, but this is critical. We're going to start with a very low torque and we're going to work our way up in multiple steps. And we always start at the low torque and we go around the case a couple times to make sure that it's absolutely seated before we do the final torquing. You can see how it moves a little bit more, even though I've already torqued it. It's still going to move a little bit because the case is going to suck down even further or more evenly. That's why I always go over it multiple times before I go to my high torque number. These ones stayed about the same, but those ones over there moved. And that's all it takes to get an inconsistent measurement. You know, there's something to be said about measuring. A lot of people I've had message me and say, just tell me how to do it. Tell me what the numbers are. Well, 
I can tell you what the numbers are, but there's also a way to do it to get the numbers. And that's that comes with experience and over the years of doing you know hundreds and hundreds of these cases I've done. And you know, I can give you the numbers, but I guarantee you when I put the block together and you put it together for the first time, we're gonna get different results. So there is a little bit of a, you know, a touch, I guess you could say, in putting these together. There's a little bit of a feel to it. So um, the only way to get that is experience. So, you know, once you've built, you know, hundreds of blocks like I have, then you'll get that experience. But that's generally why I don't tell people the actual numbers to use. It's not because I'm trying to be secretive, but it's, so if something bad happens and you put your motor together after I gave you the numbers to use, it's gonna look bad on me, right? Cause everybody's gonna be like, well, he gave me the numbers and obviously the numbers are wrong. Well, I don't wanna get into that situation because like I said, there's, there's more to it than just what the numbers need to be. So um, that's generally why I do that. And you know, a small part of me is gonna guard some of those numbers because like I said, it took me 15 years to figure this out. And um, yeah, I had failures. I had a lot of failures when I first started out doing this on my own, but that's how you learn. So, um, you know, I do uh, I do guard it out a little bit, but I do want to show you guys as much as possible because I do want to educate more people. So that's why we're here today doing this. So now that we've got these case bolts down to the first low torque value, we're going to step these up in three increments. All right, so we got the new crank. And you guys are going to love this. So we got a little treat for you here. This is pretty much one of the best cranks you can buy for a Subaru, I mean, in my opinion. I mean, of course there's other manufacturers out there, but this is what I run in my race car and I've had great luck with it. So without further ado, a brand new manly built crank. Look at that baby. Comes with a new pin. Yeah, yeah, she's pretty. So this is the new crank that we're going to be specking out for this block. Um, whenever I spec my blocks, I use the exact crank that it's going to be used, the exact bearings, as you can see. The bearings are in the block, dry fitted all the way down. The ACL bearings that we just showed you in the other video, you can't really see them, it's a little dark. Um, but yeah, we're specking this out basically with all the exact parts we're going to use so that when I put my blocks together, there's there's as little variables as possible so that I know everything is exactly the way I want it. So now we're gonna do is we're gonna take measurements on this crankshaft here. So these are the main journals here, okay? There's one, two, three, four, and five. This is thrust five, of course. This crank, what's cool about these cranks is, not only is it billet super strong, it's not gonna break on you. I mean, Subarus really don't have issues with breaking cranks really i mean i've seen it once or twice but there's usually something else that happened really bad um, but this also has what's called cross drilled oiling so um, if you look at these here these oil galleys the way they build these cranks is these oil galleys actually are cross drilled so the oil flows through the crank all the way through like that the stock crank doesn't do that the stock crank is not cross drilled in that way so what this helps you do is this helps maintain oil pressure at higher RPMs you know, versus a stock crank. This gives us a little more headroom for high RPM oiling, helps a little bit with starvation issues these motors are known for, and um, it's just, it's a really nice touch. You know, like I said, I, I rev my car out to 9,000 RPM on every pass, and I've never had an issue with my oil system, and I run this crank, um, but then again, how this is specced when we drop this in is gonna make a difference too. You can put this crank in your block and spec it wrong and have just the same problems as a stock one. So um, I've got a little bit of a, uh, you know, I've got this figured out. So, uh, you know, what I do works well for me. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure these journals individually, all of them. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out when this crank is laying in this block with these bearings and this torque on these bolts in this case, what the actual oil clearance is inside here, which is called the main bearing oil clearance. Um, so what we're, what we're gonna do to figure that out is we've already got the bearings in here. We've got a, a digital bore gauge. This is my preferred method here. It's very accurate, it's digital. And what this does is you're gonna, we're, we're gonna stick this in here in this tunnel and we're gonna figure out what the measurement on this bearing is when it's all torqued together. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a micrometer this is the micrometer i use and we're going to measure the journal here 
And then we're gonna do some math and we're gonna figure out what the difference is and that's gonna tell us what our actual oil clearance is when this crank will be laid in this block with these exact bearings. And we're gonna do from there is we're gonna do what's called, this is what's called blueprinting. You always hear that term. Blueprinting is exactly what we're doing right now. We're actually figuring out what these clearances are and then we're gonna adjust them and there's, certain, there's a couple tricks to make these adjustments but we can only do so much. So if we get these clearances you know, down on paper and they're way further out than I can deal with, then we're gonna have to go to plan B and we're gonna have to do some machine work. If it's really bad, then the case isn't usable, which would be terrible, but I'm hoping that's not the case. Um, but yeah, blueprinting is basically just checking things. Um, if, you're, if you just slam a crank in it and slam some bearings in it and say you blueprint in a block, that's not blueprinting, that's not, you didn't do it. So blueprinting takes time, takes a lot of patience, takes the right tools and you also don't have to use these tools so I can hand this tool to you and tell you measure that journal and you come over here and you measure it just like you saw me do it and I guarantee you you would get four different numbers by the time I got my number the same every five times and the reason is is because there's a special way to use these tools these are these tools are very very sensitive I mean we're talking just one little little movement on that like you can't even see that I don't know if you can see this but that little wiggle I just did right there ever so slightly, that's thousands of an inch, makes a huge difference. So if you come over here and you measure this a little off center or you don't know how to use this, this uh, caliper correctly, your numbers aren't gonna be right. You're gonna think it's right, put it together, you're gonna have a problem, so. Same thing goes for this. This is extremely sensitive. Um, the way you use this is uh, crucial in order to get a right reading. So this is where it comes back to where I was telling you, you know, this is why I don't give numbers because if I give people numbers, they're going to try to go and do it themselves. And when it fails, they're going to blame me. So that's why I don't do it. If you, if you want, um, you know, if you want my motors or, you know, my results, buy a motor from me. That's the easiest way to do it. Just pay me to build you a block and then you don't have to worry about it. And then if it does fail, then it's on me hundred percent. So that's the, that's the beauty of that. And I do warranty my blocks. So. Uh, contrary to what everybody thinks or says on the internet, I do stand behind everything I build, uh, my blocks, heads, whatever, as long as I built it and I know that it wasn't a failure for, you know, negligence and tuning or anything like that, I always stand behind it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get to measuring here. Um, it's kind of boring, so I'll probably uh, do a little time lapse on this here, but uh, yeah, it's going to take a little bit of time, so we'll come back to you here in a sec. and um, unfortunately we are pretty far out of spec uh, for where I want the block so um, we have a couple options so this is kind of this kind of I talked about when you do a used block that's been blown up before and you try to rebuild it run into this a lot because these cases are aluminum and they flex a lot you put power to them you overheat them you spin a bearing that creates a lot of heat so um, that's that's gonna make the case move and it's not gonna be the same. So what the first thing we're gonna try doing is we're gonna adjust the torque on the case bolt. So um, we don't know what spec they used when they put this together with the case bolts because it has ARP case bolts in it. Some machinists don't like torquing to ARP's recommendations because they are extremely high in value. And uh, some people have seen them pull threads out of the block and they don't like doing it. So they'll go to a lower spec They'll run the block at that its whole life. And then we come in here and we try to use the other spec and it's not gonna be right. So 
what we did to be safe was we started with the lower number, which is what some people do, which is closer to an OEM spec. We measured this the first time. We are, so right now, as far as our clearances go, we're loose, we're very loose. So we're gonna now tighten the bolts down to ARP spec, which is a lot tighter, which should bring the main line in tighter a little bit and we're gonna measure it again. And what we're hoping is, is that's the spec they used last time, which will get us closer to where we can use this block. If that doesn't work, then it's gonna to have to go out to the machine shop and it's gonna to have to get machined. So now we're gonna do that and we're gonna come back. to see where we're at. We unfortunately were not uh, anywhere near the spec that I want for my blocks or you know for any of them for that aspect but uh, basically we tried manipulating uh, the case bolts and, and doing things you know to get the clearances back but it was just too much. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to swap the bearings out with a different size custom bearing that uh, is hopefully going to bring us back to where we need to be. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I've already got the block back apart. I'm going to pull all these bearings out that we put in. I'm going to put in the other set of bearings, put it all back together dry again, and we're going to measure it again. We're going to keep repeating this process until we get the specs exactly where I want them. So. out the bearings we put some other custom bearings in it remeasured it and we got a lot closer but we're still not getting the clearances we want um, you know this is I'm really picky about this stuff you know I, I go back and forth with this some people would probably roll it but when you got this much power you're looking for and this much money on the line you just you know I gotta have things perfect so what we're gonna end up doing with this block we're gonna take it down to our local machine shop and they're actually one of the few that can actually correct this main line in the state I don't think there is anybody else uh, locally that can do it for us but um, we're gonna take this block down there and we're gonna drop it off and we're gonna get the crank and or the uh, the main line all remachined on it and then uh, we'll try dry fitting it again when it comes back and we should be good after that um, I don't foresee any other issues right now. Um, while the block's down there, uh, definitely going to get it hot tanked and cleaned up and uh, ready to go. So I'm going to end this video here, but we're going to do a part two to this video when the block comes back from the machine shop on the final assembly. So stay tuned for that.